Hello everyone, this is Latia for you. I'm coming to you again today with another Bible study video. We are still in the book of Revelations. This is Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. It's a short um, segment, but I really feel like the Lord wants us to sit in this and really contemplate on these verses. So let's go ahead and get started with prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word, which is a treasure to us, God. It is so valuable. It is so good. It is so filled with light, Lord God. Let it penetrate us, God. Let it get down into us, God. Let it change us. Let it cleanse us, God. Let us be washed with the washing of your word, Lord God. Make us fit, make us ready, make us right, Lord Jesus. Transform our mind, Lord God. Let us walk in the way that you wanted us to walk, God, because of your word, Lord. Let us eat of it. Let us live it, God. Help us to obey the words that you said. Help us to find ourselves in your word, God. Change us, Jesus. Let us look in this mirror and be changed, Lord. In Jesus' name, we want to look like you, God. All of you and none of me, Jesus. Let me decrease that you might increase, God. All of you and none of me. Even be in every mistake I make, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. It belongs to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, let's just really quickly recap. We are in the book of Revelations. And of course, something good to kind of remember where we came from is the fact that this is um, John and he is in this atmosphere of worship, right? On the Lord's day, he was in the spirit. He had set the atmosphere. He was on the island of Patmos and he was exiled there, right? So he was in his prison-like state. He was in his isolation state. He was away from people. He was, he was withdrawn from the world and drawn into a heavenly place, right? He was setting the atmosphere and he was ready when he was setting this atmosphere, he must have had a pen somewhere nearby because he was able to write these things down, which were shown to him. And what was shown to him, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which was given to him by who God, the father, God, the father gave this revelation to Jesus and Jesus in turn gave it to John via his angel. The angel came to um, John and, and, spoke the testimony that was given to Jesus by God, right? So we are here. Um, uh, we know that this, the book of Revelation has a special blessing on it for those that hear, for those that read, and for those who keep what is written in it. Why? Because the time is near. They knew that when we will be reading this, it, it will be, it will be time. It will be getting closer and closer. And we know now that, you know, our redemption is drawing nigh. It is so much closer now than it has ever been. So the words that are in this teaching are very pertinent. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And when we say, you know, it's, it's a, a point in time where we need to dig in and dig deep and see what God is revealing to us, it, this is the time. If you hear these verses, don't let them get past you. Stop. Let them marinate in you. Find yourself. Let the Holy Spirit find you in these words. Let him reveal to you where you stand and also how you should maintain in order to, to if, you, if you're not in it or, or if God has delivered you from this place, how you should live to maintain these things, right? Ephesus is so important because it, when we first were introduced to Ephesus, remember, we studied the book of Ephesians and it was all about maturing as believers, 
in the body of Christ, right? Going from a sitting position to a standing position to a position of movement, right? How to grow in Christ the way God wanted you to. It is so very important. And for us to know that, hey, this is what he was addressing here and in and, and proper conduct as a believer, right? And yet this is a church, this is a this is a letter to them and how they can improve on their conduct. What is missing from them, right? What is going on within their ranks that God is wanting to address, all right? And so that's where we're picking up. We're picking up in verse four. Um, I'll just go ahead and read the previous section where it talks about the good parts of their report card really fast and, and it'll set the tone for where we are right now. So chapter two, verse one, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, write the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, your patient endurance and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake and you have not grown weary. All right, so verse four, here we go. But I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Verse five, remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Wow, this is a, this is a powerful, quick, straight to the point word, right? This is a part of that two-edged sword that we see in the mouth of the Lord in, in the earlier scenes, right? The stars are the angels and the lampstands are the churches. And this is a, a stern word, but you know what? He chastens those whom he loved. Of course, he started with, with the good, didn't he? He let them know what was good with them. He the things that he'd seen that he liked, right? But any good father is not only going to tell his child the good, right? He's going to always tell him the ways that he can improve. And not just the ways that he can improve, he's going to reveal the leaven. Because leaven is is just as it seems, it's it's small, but it spreads it gets worse. It takes over. It leavens the whole loaf. That's why we are to be vigilant of leaven, vigilant of sin, vigilant to repent, zealous to repent. Why? Because we don't want to have our lampstands removed. It says, but I have this against you. That means God is holding, you know, we, 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 we always talk, well, I don't say we always, but there's a scripture that says, you know, blessed is a man whose sins are not counted against him. But here, if you look at this, it's saying that this I have against you. So obviously they're not qualifying as that man whose sin is not accounted against him, right? They have Jesus in their heart, but something's happened. Something that's caused them to cut themselves off in some sort of way some some sort of evil or something has has caused their heart to lose love hmm love is every if you don't have love the bible says you don't have it you have nothing you're a tinkling symbol it, you you have nothing the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. But the second is 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 big. It, it's love again, right? It's to love your neighbor as yourself. 
Have you ever seen people do things for someone and it is totally not out of love? It could be out of many things. It could be out of total, you know, bigotry. It could be out of, of racism. It, it could be out of so many things. It could be out of pride. It could be out of total self-assurance. That's not the way that we give, right? That's not a, a good a good posture of giving. We are to give cheerfully, right? How do you give cheerfully? You have love. You have love. That's where charity is. It's in love. When you're giving from a place of love, right? It says that you have abandoned. That's a big word. To abandon doesn't just mean to walk away. It means like to desert, right? Almost like you would desert a house. Say you are building a house and you are putting so much love, so much passion, so much of everything that was you. You were totally consumed in it. And something happened along the way where you lost the motivation, you lost the drive, all of those things that were fueled by love, you lost those things. So it made it easy for you to what? Abandon it, to walk away from it. Some of us had great intentions. We can all find ourselves in this. To have to start out with great intentions at doing something. I remember one church I used to go to was a very tiny church. And, you know, I had the greatest intentions when I worked in the um, children's ministry. There was no children's ministry. It was just me. And I had come in with the greatest intentions to make the room look nicer, to decorate, to do everything and to provide like a little curriculum for the kids and set, you know, little things up. And I had my first baby and it, she was so small and, you know, I had to be there anyway for her. So, you know, it quickly went from something that was at first done out of love, but then turned out into burnout. Why? Because I was operating for myself. I, I wasn't able to go listen to the sermons anymore. I had to stay in there. And then people started bringing their kids in there with me since I was sitting there with my daughter anyway. So lots of people started bringing all their kids in there and then they would leave, but no one would volunteer to sit. And it just, it totally, it angered me. It, it turned something that was being done out of love into something that was being done out of spiteful. And there was bitterness there and I knew it. And I knew I had to get out of there because I knew that it was no longer something I was doing for the Lord. It was totally out of desperation that I needed to get out of that. I had abandoned the love of it. All the joy that I thought I was getting out of it was totally from myself. If I would have listened, if I would have would have listened to God more, then I probably would have never done it in the first place. Or he would have turned me into a, a better, a better light of how to think about it, right? Or how to approach the situation. But instead, I was just fed up. I was just bitter, right? I didn't know what to do. I didn't see any way out of it. And so it was easy for me to abandon the love that I had had for it. These things seem small. They don't seem like they affect much but they do because they affect the stance of your heart. They affect your future decisions. They affect how you approach people and situations, right? That makes me more cautious of being used, right? It makes me more afraid of wanting to, to get involved in things as it relates to children. It makes me, you know, and, and, and the fact that I can realize that helps me to be delivered from it 
helps God to truly get down in there and say, okay, let's deal with this now. Because there had to be repentance at some point. Lord, forgive me for coming out of myself when I gave. Forgive me for not giving out of love. It says that you have abandoned the love that you had at first. This doesn't just mean in the works, but this can be also in the way that you look at God. This can be in so many different areas. Your worship, right? Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the way that we do things in the structure and we become complacent. The sincerity begins to dwindle. The light and the spark begins to go down, right? Remember, the 10, the ten virgins, all of them were asleep. All of them were asleep when the town cry came that the bridegroom was coming and all of them had to get themselves back into a position of being ready some of them were not ready some of them were not prepared some of them had not thought ahead some of them had abandoned the love that they had at first don't abandon the love that you have for god if you see an area that you're dwindling in and you don't know what to do and, and you, you're, you're asking God, God, I need you here. I need you, Holy Spirit, please pour into me. I don't know what it is. Just repent and wait on the Lord to answer. Wait on the Lord. Sometimes it takes patient endurance, right? Sometimes it, it takes seeking his face, knocking on the door. What is that? Matthew um, 7. You need to be waiting, knocking, seeking. He, he sees you. He's not going to ignore you. God loves when someone asks for wisdom. He loves when his children are seeking him. Do you not think that he's a good giver of gifts? He is the Holy Father. If an if a, a earthly father can give good gifts, how much more so can the Father who created all things? He's going to give you good gifts. If you ask him for wisdom, if you ask him for his Holy Spirit, he will be faithful to his word. He will give you the promises that he has promised you. But you must seek him knock don't just give up and walk away and abandon the love that you had at first when you see the leaven creeping in seize it cut it out remove the whole loaf fast pray whatever you have to do seek god's face Do not abandon the love that you had at first. When you first begin to know God, when you, when you were young or, or when, depending on however, and for your, those of you who are new in Christ, take heed. Don't turn off your ears to this because this is what can happen. This is a warning to all Christians. This is to Ephesus. Where we learned how we should be as a body, our posture. So it represents all of us, new, old, in the middle. Don't lose your first love. Don't abandon the love you had at first. When you realize what he was delivering you from, when you realize, wow, he saved me. and He knew I did all that. Don't forget that. Don't become so holy that you can't relate to people in church who are seeking God's face, who clearly look different from you or someone that you might have judged. Don't abandon the love 
You need that love. It's the second commandment. The second of the of greatest commandments is to love your neighbor as yourself. If you love, oh, it says that you shall owe no man anything basically, but love. And then you have obeyed all of the law. Why? Because all of the law is based on love. But I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Sometimes our positions in the church when we become higher ranking, it causes us to abandon the love we had at first, right? Sometimes out of spite because you have more responsibility and you become exhausted and you stop seeking God's face, but sometimes out of pride, right? It just depends on, on where God has you. Because sometimes out of pride, you can say, hey, find somebody else to do that. When sometimes God wants you to take that napkin and wipe that mess up. Why? Because you have love for his temple. Even Jesus, the son of God, the Messiah, had love enough to go and cleanse the temple. How much more so can you help that child who fell down up? Yes, you have a position. Yes, there are other people that can help. Yes, that baby is crying and there are two other workers and they, they're working with the other kids. They'll get to them. No, God is calling you. If you see the need, then this is the need that you need to meet. If the Holy Spirit is putting it in your face and he's saying, look at this, Don't walk away. Don't abandon the love you had at first. In the beginning, when God first called you, you would have run to help pick up that child who was crying. You would have run to get that mess up or to help cook at that event. Or to stand as a greeter or to do the work of the Lord, whatever it was. But so many people abandon the love they had at first. It's because a lot of them might have come from the wrong place initially. Or even if they had come from the right place, they did not maintain their garments, right? They allowed their garments to get soiled along the way with the world and the draw of the world and the and the the things that that we value instead of the things that God values. Do not abandon the love you had at first. Verse five, remember therefore from where you have fallen. This is a fallen state. When you can't humble yourself and work for the Lord and get into position When he's calling you, this is a fallen state. You're no longer seated in the heavenly places. You're no longer in a position of grace. You've fallen. And you must recognize it. I never forget Joyce Meyer saying, um, I always think of this. Um, it, it, she was talking about relationships at the time, but I just apply it to my entire Christian life. You have to know when the enemy has entered in. You have to know when that conversation has shifted and now the enemy is being busy. You have to be able to identify that. You have to have discernment for that. The Holy Spirit can give you that discernment. The Holy Spirit can give you the discernment for when you have lost your first love. All you have to do is ask him. All you have to do is seek his face. He'll reveal these things to you. Sometimes if I'm seeking and I'm sitting and nothing is happening and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and waiting and nothing is happening, Sometimes what I do is I say, Lord, reveal it to me in my dreams. Reveal it to me in a way that I can understand 
and in a time that I can understand and forgive me if I'm getting in the way of receiving what you're saying. If I'm sitting here and I think I'm seeking and I'm waiting, but my mind is all over the place, forgive me. Reveal it to me and and take down these walls, these things that are distracting me, these things that are trying to stand in between me and my deliverance, God. Show me in my dreams when I'm when I'm totally open. Show me however you have to show me. For me, it's my dreams because I know that a lot of my defenses that I might have up during the day are usually down when I'm sleeping. And my spirit is completely open and ready to receive. So I usually ask for them in my dreams. Especially if I'm seeking God and I know that, hey, there's something here. Holy Spirit. I can't, I can't hear you. I'm something's missing. Something's not right. Lord, show this thing to me. Show me in my dream. Show me however you got to show me. Right. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. You have to remember. You have to remember where God has brought you from. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Tell others where God has brought you from. Evangelize, go out and share the gospel. Why? Because these things keep the fire burning in us. They keep the love alive. What was in Jesus's eyes when we just studied in chapter one? There was fire. I personally just feel like that's the passion. That's the fire that he feels for his church. There's fire in his eyes. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Remember the passion that you once had for Jesus. Remember how wildly you used to dance in his presence, not caring about people, not caring about not fitting in. Sometimes we go from a place of not caring about not fitting in to totally caring about fitting in and and getting to know everybody and oh I need everybody to approve of how how I am and such and such likes me and that person likes me and we all kind of hang out and so I have to act a certain way. No. When you know Jesus it frees you from people. Yes, you should make connections. Yes, you should have friends. That's nice. We should stir each other up, right? In in God. But the thing is, if, if there's a relationship that is causing you to be bound, that is not of God. Your relationship should allow you to be freed. If it's causing you to be bound, then maybe you want the relationship more than God wants that relationship. Maybe you have an attachment to the world and, and, and approval of people and this is not of God. Just because a person is in the church with you does not mean that that relationship is of God. Sometimes you need to recognize when you are the teacher or you are a student and whether or not you are being influenced by something that is negative or something that is positive. You can go from a state of of being perfectly fine with gossiping, and then next thing you know, you got a friend, and all of a sudden, boom, that light turned back on. God revealed something that was still in you. Why? Because that person is influencing you, and you're feeding right into it. You're influencing them. No. Remember where you have fallen. Repent. You have to know when you have abandoned the love you had at first, the desire, the drive to obey God, to not live a lawless life, to not live according to your flesh anymore. When you were willing to cut everybody off, when you were willing to walk away from everything for the call of God, for the passion of God, to preach the gospel, to go in, into all the nations, just like he said. 
baptizing, making disciples of all men. You're willing to go around the world. But you won't even go into Dollar General and tell anybody about the love of Christ now. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm not loving you like I used to love you. Bring back my love, Jesus. Bring back my passion. He's a good father. He gives good gifts. If he sees that your desire is to be in him, to be of him, do you think he would withhold that good thing from you? Never. He would not withhold something so good, so precious from his children. Repent and do the works you did at first. Go back. Sometimes we need to sit down from the positions that we're in. Sit down, go down, right? And when we go down, he'll lift us up. Maybe we need to go back and work in that children's ministry again. The place where we felt so abandoned, but come from a different place, come from love. Say, I'm, I'm going to do this different now. I'm giving this to you, Lord. I'm doing this for you. I'm a servant of the most high God, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is, the one who was, and the one who is to come. I am serving for him. He saved me. What has he saved you from? What has he saved you from? Do you even remember sometimes our 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 past it's it's so far in the past that we've forgotten sometimes you need to go back just like the 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 Israelites you know when they Lord was like hey set up an altar here put take some of those rocks out of that river and put them on the side and I want you to remember every time you see this this altar I want you to remember where I brought you from because that was the second time that he had parted the waters. This was 40 years later after they had been wandering in the wilderness and God had to show them again how he heaped up the waters so that they could walk across on dry ground. He said, remember, remember, take these stones and build them up and remember where I brought you from. Every time your children ask, what are these rocks for? You can look back and say, these are the rocks that are inside, the, that were from the Jordan, where we crossed the cross so that we can occupy the promised land. He said, remember. You might need to go back and build some altars. You might need to go back in, in your journal and write some things down that you left out. Or read something that you haven't looked back on in a long time. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, where God has brought you from. He brought us from a mighty long way. And we were grateful. But now, some of us have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. Do the works you did at first. Remember, we have predestined, preordained works that God has already set up for us since the beginning of time. He already knew that this is my child. They're going to receive my free gift of salvation. Boom, this is the plan I have for them. I want them to walk out these works. These works are not just for, for the people. They're for your own benefit. Remember, there are rewards for the works that you do. They're going to help determine how eternity looks for you. They're going to determine, you know, yeah, you are saved. 
by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. You got your ticket in. Well, how, what's going to come after that? How is he going to pour out those blessings for eternity on you? It's the works that you did at first. It's okay for you to change the works and over time do different things. But when you abandon the love you had at first, mm -mm, you need to step down. You need to step back. You need to go back and remember. Remember where God has brought you from. Go back there. Humble yourself. Get down. Go low. Ask God what you need to do to get back right. Repent. Remember where you have fall, fallen from, from where you have fallen. Repent, repent. And do the works you did at first. The people you were willing to go visit. Some of us were willing to go to nursing homes and, 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 Go visit people, write letters. Now it, you, <laughs> you barely be able to get somebody to, to volunteer to be an usher. A usher? A greeter? What? Remember where you have fallen. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen repent and do the works you did at first do the things that you think might be beneath you now get down there scrub that floor serve jesus was washing people's feet even as he was about to ascend into heaven he knew that his death was near he knew that he was the one who should have been honored. And yet he was down on the ground, washing feet. Do the first works you did. Do the works you did at first. Don't abandon them. Don't abandon the love you had at first. Some of us really need to sit and marinate on this. Whether you are an old Christian, a middle, or a young Christian. Why? Because we're all susceptible to this. If you're a young Christian, you need to say, okay, what are the things I am doing? What are the things that are, I'm passionate about? Write these things down so that you can remember them 20 years from now. If the Lord tarries. <laughs> But just keep the passion, keep the fire burning. I know a lot of Christians who are looking for the rapture, sometimes they get burned out because they think, oh, well, he hasn't come yet. It's been six months since he gave me that dream. And I just don't know. I, I thought he said he was coming. And, da, da, da. and then next thing you know, you've fallen. You're back to the things that you used to do, or at, least, or at least you're not doing things with the same urgency and the same passion or the same drive that you had at first. Repent. Repent. Make sure there's oil in your lamp. Make sure that your motives are pure. Ask God to reveal them to you and show you how to be restored. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Jesus is revealing something to us here that a lampstand for a church has a place. It has a place. But when you take the lampstand down, you're taking it out of its place. It had a right, and now it doesn't. It had a position, and now it doesn't. 
God said that we are a light and the light is supposed to sit up high somewhere, right? For all to see so that it can shine and bring light. It can reflect the light of God. But when you take a lampstand and you put it under a bushel, if you put it away, that means you no longer are using it for its light. Don't let the Lord have to remove your lampstand because you won't repent, because you won't remember where you have fallen from where you have fallen. Because you won't do the first works anymore. You just refuse to go back there and humble yourself. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. You used to be willing to go vacuum the floor just to be in the house of the Lord. Just to feel like you're there in his presence. Remember where you have fallen. Repent. Do the works you did at first. If not, he will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. He always, he's always adding that love at the end. He's always, he's always trying to Make sure you know that this is something that I don't want to do. But I'll do it if I have to. But I'm giving you a chance. Repent. All you have to do is repent. Mean it. Say you're sorry. Turn away from this thing. And turn towards me and I'll show you the right way. Repent. Admit that you're wrong. Admit that that's you. Admit that there's something wrong. Something it's different. And we're just wandering around in circles and not actually admitting that there is a problem. That's the first thing that you can do towards a recovery, right? Is to admit that there is a problem. There's something wrong. I don't know what it is, or I do know what it is, and I just don't know how to get back right. I'm surrendering this to you. I'm not letting this come between us anymore. God, forgive me. Forgive me for whatever it is I'm doing wrong. Show it to me. Reveal it to me. So that you don't take away my lampstand from its place. Let my lampstand always be in its place. Lord Jesus, help me to remember, therefore, from where? I have fallen. Help me to repent. Help me to do the works I did at first. Help me not to abandon the love that I once had. Just to even be in your house. Lord, bring it back. Bring back the fire. Let that fire that is in your eyes burn in our hearts. Let it burn in us, in our bellies, Lord God. Let us feel what you feel. And let it give us a driving force that keeps us going even when we don't feel that thing. Help us to still have the love of it. Help us to still have love in our hearts. Help us, even when motivation is gone, help us to still have love because we have your Holy Spirit. Help us to press on and press in, not just doing the works, but having the love. Remember, he told them that they We're doing the works. Remember, let's read back. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. 
They had patient endurance. That means they had the fruit of the spirit and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not and have found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake. And you have not grown weary. That means they are diligent about God's business, but what? They've abandoned the love they had at first. While they're doing, doing, doing all these things, they've forgotten the key element. Love. If you have not love, you have nothing. All this doing, doing, doing is nothing without love. All this busy, busy, busy. Humble yourselves. Remember where you have fallen. Repent. This may not be a fallen of physical nature. This could be a fallen of a spiritual nature, a mental state, a state of apathy of of complacency a state of numbness of doing out of habit and not out of love sometimes when you do something repetitiously you forget why you were doing it in the first place we must always remember love Keep love at our hearts. Love is a cornerstone of the foundation. Love is Jesus. Jesus is love. God is love. That means that love is a cornerstone. It is holding the building up. If you have not love, this building is going to topple down, right? It was not built on a good foundation. That's Matthew 7 as well. It has to have a good foundation. And if you forget it and you leave it out, then everything is for naught. If you have not love, if we have not love, I am nothing. If I have not love, I am nothing. If I'm not doing these teachings in love to feeding the sheep, to edifying the body, then I have nothing. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this treasure. We will not abandon it. We will not abandon the love that you've given us for your church, for your body, for your people, for the lost souls. We will not abandon that love, Lord God. Keep it burning fresh in us. Burn like a fire in our bellies. Rev us up, God. Churn us up. Stir us up, God, in our most holy faith. Build us up, Jesus, in your love. Help us not to abandon our first love in you. Help us to remember where you have brought us from. Help us to remember the altars that are in our lives, the rivers that you've caused us to cross. Help us to remember the sin that you delivered us from. Help us to remember that even while we were yet sinners, you died. And we remember that. We heard that in the beginning and it gave us great passion. Help us to remember that again. Where you have brought us from. Help us to humble ourselves. Help us to get low and remember the first works. Lord Jesus, have your way in us. Keep us going until the day of your return. And we know you're going to present us faultless, holy, sanctified, clean, blemish free, Jesus. We know you're doing it. We know you see us. We know you love us. 
there's anyone out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, just pray this prayer with me, but mostly believe this prayer in Jesus' name. Father God, I confess with my mouth, you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you died for my sins and you were raised again on the third day. I make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, move in, move things around, shift things, turn things over, transplant my heart, Lord God. Have your way in me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I turn away from my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed this prayer and you believe that in your heart and you know that Jesus is the Messiah, then you are saved and no one can change that. Keep the passion burning in your heart. Develop a relationship with Jesus. Talk with him daily, minute, second, every time you get a chance. Talk to him. It creates a habit, right? And it creates a love for the Father. It shows you how to live daily and make your decisions based on his presence, practicing his presence. He has so many great things for you. Just seek his face. Talk to him. Read his word. Go and be baptized in Jesus' name. And find a church home where people believe in the word. Let the Holy Spirit lead you to a church. Don't forsake the fellowship. That means don't forsake getting together with other Christians because iron sharpens iron. That means that you need your sword sharpened. You need your sword sharpened in the war or in the word. You need your spirit to be built up so that you can face the world. You can, you can get better perspective. All of that comes from being in the presence of other believers and allowing the Holy Spirit to, to dwell amongst you. One can cause a thousand to flee, but two, 10,000, right? I think that's the number I can't remember exactly what the scripture says, but it, it, two can cause 10,000 to flee. All I know is that when there's one person rebuking a spirit, you can you can rebuke that spirit, but when you get two people together, it's an exponential amount of spirits that can be fleeing. Get together with other believers. Read your word. Encourage one another. Go to church. Don't let the world fool you into thinking that, oh, it's too bad out there and all these different things that are going on and all this sickness. And no, you need to get together with other believers. I understand if your faith is not there yet, then get on Zoom and get with some other believers. They have a thousand bajillion Zoom meetings. All right, you guys, I love you, love you, love you. I'm praying for you. Leave your prayer request below. If not, you can um, just pray for yourself. God can hear you. He is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't just hear my prayers and not yours. If you feel like there's something between you and God and you can't seem to get prayers through, repent. Repent. There might be something there in the repentance that might be holding things up make sure your heart is humble and you are sincere when you're repenting and that you are truly turning away from that thing that you're repenting about and God will allow the breakthrough to occur he will allow those prayers to get through that what the thing that might be giving you a stronghold all right I love you guys I'm praying for you and you all be blessed in Jesus' name. Take care. See you guys next time.